Hi, I'm Louis Francois, co-founder of 2RDI, where we give industry trainings and build courses for everything AI related. And last week, I was at GTC, NVIDIA's annual event, and I had the chance to check out some incredible new technology. One initiative that really caught my attention is a fully open source video generator called OpenSora. They managed to train an end-to-end -end video generator, so taking text and generating a short video from it with just $200,000. Okay, 200,000 is a lot of money, but it's quite low compared to what OpenAI's Sora and other state-of-the-art video generation model cost like Runway and the others I covered on the channel that require millions to train and get similar results. Before diving into how they achieve that, let's begin by understanding the problem itself. Text-to-video generation isn't like generating a single image from text. It's about creating a sequence of images that flow together seamlessly over time. You have to capture not only the fine spatial details of a scene, but also ensure that the motion is smooth and realistic over time. This added temporal dimension introduces an entirely new layer of complexity and cost, mainly due to the fact that these AI systems don't understand time. They only get tokens, which are either our words or pixels. They don't have understandings of the laws of physics that humans develop through trial and error when baby. They just have access to our world through tokens, making the video time consistency extremely difficult. There are essentially two approaches to tackle this problem. The first is to train a model directly to convert text into videos, which means the model has to learn both how to generate high quality images and how to stitch them together into coherent motions in one go without any glitch or artifacts. Of course, this is ideal, and it's what you want to end up with but this approach has the same challenges I just mentioned. But there's a second approach, which instead takes a detour, simplifying the problem with a two-step process. First, you train a model to generate high quality image from a text prompt, and then you use that model and the image generated as a conditional signal to generate a video. OpenSora 2.0 adopts this second approach and leverages mature techniques from image generation instead of training a whole end-to-end -end pipeline from scratch. By starting with a robust pre-trained text-to-image model, the system can focus on adding the motion dimension later and extensively focus on each part step by step. This separation makes it much easier to manage the training process, reduces the overall complexity and significantly cuts down on the required compute and data resources as we will see. But before we dive in further, I'd love to introduce the sponsor of this video with the goal of helping to work with open source models like this one, Blueprints Hub by Mozilla AI. Developing with open source AI shouldn't be complicated. Instead of fighting each other and reinventing the wheel for every application, why not start from templates we all work on? That's what Mozilla AI aims to do. Mozilla AI's Blueprint Hub gives you the tools to explore, collaborate, and start building with open source local models quickly by using pre-configured templates designed for common applications. There are tons of blueprints already available for easily fine-tuning models with federated learning to fine-tuning a speech recognition model for your voice that you can then quickly adapt to your project. So whether you are fine-tuning a speech model or building any type of AI-powered application, you'll find trusted resources and a thriving community to support your journey. Start building today with the first thing below. Now, let's dive into how OpenSora 2.0 is built and trained. The training pipeline is not just divided into two stages, but into three distinct stages, each carefully optimized to save compute, reduce cost, and deliver state-of-the-art performance. In the very first stage, the goal is to establish a robust text-to-video model at a low resolution of 256 pixels, just to be able to make something that seems promising. Instead of starting from scratch or merely fine-tuning any image model, the team takes a different approach. They begin with the Flux model, a powerful text-to-image diffusion model with 11 billion parameters that generates high-quality images from text. What's important is that this initial Flux model already has deep visual understanding capabilities, making it the perfect foundation. However, generating videos requires not just spatial coherence, but also temporal consistency, smooth, believable motions. To efficiently add this temporal dimension, OpenSora uses an advanced architecture inspired by the MMDIT, or Multimodal Diffusion Transformer, also inspired from Flux. In short, MMDIT processes information in two main steps. 
first, it handles text and visual data separately using dedicated transformer streams. It's two distinct pipelines, one for text, another for image or video frames, each focusing independently to capture the best possible representations of their respective data. For text encoding, MMDIT leverages three powerful pre-trained text models, but in our case, we just have two here. The ClipL model that provides a strong baseline textual visual alignment and the T5XXL to contribute in a deeper semantic understanding particularly beneficial for capturing detailed and complex textual context. Here, they don't use the ClipG shown in this figure for OpenSora. These textual features are combined with the visual input, which is seen here as the noise latent, representing images or frames with added noise, which the model then progressively denoises to generate clear and coherent visual content. This is the whole diffusion process that I covered in tons of videos if you want to learn more about that part. Next, the MMDIT introduces integrated transformer blocks, acting as bridges connecting these two separate streams. This allows a seamless bidirectional flow of information, the text data informs visual generation, while visual features influence textual understanding. Essentially, it's like two experts exchanging insights to improve their mutual understanding. An important feature of MMDIT is its learned modulation, meaning the model dynamically adjusts how much it relies on textual prompts versus intermediate visual cues at each step of generating an output. This dynamic adjustment significantly enhances the alignment between what the user writes, so the text prompts, and the visual results, or the generated images or videos here, ensuring better quality and consistency. But what's most important here is the training data. In this NSO stage, OpenSora uses a substantial and carefully curated dataset comprising approximately 70 million short video samples, each at a resolution of 256 pixels with automatically generated captions. This extensive dataset was obtained from various public available video sources filtered and processed rigorously to ensure high quality diverse content suitable for effective training. And this step was also the most expensive one, requiring more than 2,000 GPU days and just a bit over $100,000. But now we have quite a powerful model that takes a prompt and generates a nice low quality video. The stage two further simplifies the training process by transitioning from text to video generation to image to video generation, still at 256 pixels. In this stage, instead of relying solely on text prompts, the model learns how to extend a single image into a short video. To do this, they modify their conditioning method by encoding the initial image and adding it as extra information into the latent video representation. This adjustment allows the model to learn explicit motion generation independently from the complexities of scene creation. By focusing purely on motion, having the information from a flux pre-generated image, the training becomes faster, less data intensive, and significantly cheaper. To ensure robustness, the team also cleverly introduces a dropout mechanism for this whole image conditioning step, randomly forcing the model sometimes to generate videos without an additional image, thus keeping its text-to-video capabilities sharp and not totally dependent on the pre-generated image. For this stage, the team leverages a reduced dataset containing around 10 million carefully selected high-quality video samples, still at the resolution of 256 pixels. There's a similar rigorous preprocessing step applied to ensure consistency and quality using more filters. Also, by reusing previously generated images from the Flux model, the computational requirements are significantly reduced, requiring only about 384 GPU days or $18,000. The third and final stage is all about refining this model and scanning it up to high resolution videos. Specifically here, it's 768 pixels. So not the high resolution we often talk about, but still quite higher than 256. However, directly jumping to high resolution will be super expensive. So OpenSora employs a novel video deep compression autoencoder architecture called Video DCAE inspired by the deep compression autoencoder, DCAE, that was initially for images, but now for videos. 
I also covered it in our latent diffusion video video, again transformed for videos, adding a three-dimensional convolution rather than a two-dimensional one. Initially, the team started with the open source Hunyan Video VA, which achieves a compression ratio of 4 by 8 by 8. While this is effective, it resulted in processing around 115,000 tokens per training video, leading to considerable computational demands. OpenSora increased the spatial compression ratio significantly by 4 times, so to 32, while maintaining a temporal compression ratio of 4. This adjustment effectively reduced the number of spatial tokens processed, greatly enhancing computational efficiency and preserving essential motion features. And so, Video DCAE now drastically reduces both spatial and temporal dimensions through deep compression, compressing videos into a significantly smaller latent representation and drastically reducing the computational load. This compact latent representation serves as the input for the video generation model, which efficiently processes the combined text and image data within this compressed form. After generating the video in this latent representation, a decoder reconstructs the compressed representation back into high-resolution, visually coherent video frames. Entering the final output maintains both visual clarity and temporal smoothness. To maintain video quality at a high resolution, OpenSora uses a sophisticated classifier-free guidance strategy where they separately adjust how strongly text and image conditions influence the generation process. Specifically, image guidance typically requires a smaller scale to prevent static outputs, while text guidance benefits from a larger scale for better semantic alignment. To optimize quality further, OpenSora introduces a dynamic scaling approach for image guidance, which varies according to both video frames and the denoising step. Initially, frames towards the end of the video need stronger image guidance to maintain coherence, whereas later denoising steps, where the video content is almost formed, require less guidance. This balanced approach, combined with guidance oscillation, alternating guidance scales at different steps, helps maintain visual stability and reduce flickering. Additionally, OpenSora explicitly models motion intensity through a dedicated motion score parameter. By adjusting this motion score during inference, users can precisely control the video's dynamism, achieving the desired balance between minimal, high fidelity motion and more dynamic, energetic scenes, which I haven't seen before and seems quite cool. And for this final stage, they further compress their dataset to around 5 million carefully selected high quality video samples at 768 pixels with again more filters, now requiring around 1,536 GPU days or $73,000. So splitting the training process, starting from text to image strength and existing approaches, transitioning into efficient motion modeling at lower resolution and finally refining at high resolution, OpenSora 2.0 achieves state-of-the-art video generation quality comparable to much more expensive models, but at a fraction of the cost. OpenSora 2.0's talk at GTC was all about their cost efficiency, which, I must admit, seemed quite impressive compared to what we are used to hearing online and made me curious to learn more about this and make this video. While training comparable models like MovieGen and Step Video Text to Video typically incurs expenses in the millions of dollars, OpenSora 2.0 achieves very similar performance levels with a training cost of just $200,000 renting H200 GPUs at $2 per hour for a total of 4,000 hours. Obviously, it's still super expensive to get something powerful and own it, but they managed to get it down by 10 times and shared how they achieved it. And best of all, it's completely open source, giving everyone a chance to be part of this exciting revolution in video generation. I put all the reference for this video and useful links in the description below if you want to try it out or read more. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.